Well, this year marks the centenary of the birth of Oliver Tambo. He was born on the 27th of October 1917, and to remember and acknowledge the life and legacy of Tambo, centenary celebrations have been underway throughout the year, building up to an event on the 27th this Friday, which would have been Tambo's 100th birthday. As part of these celebrations, we'll be talking to people who knew the late former ANC president. And joining me in studio is UDM leader Bantu Holomisa. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. <coughs> well, you welcomed Tambo back home uh, to Bitsana in 1991, the year before that the ANC had been unbanned. But Tambo and his family had spent years in exile. What was it like? What was that moment like to welcome him home? Well, firstly, I met uh, uh, O.R. Tambo in the late uh, 90s in London. Uh, that was, uh, he was with, with pres uh, former President Mbeki, and uh, we briefed them on what we were doing in Transkei then, and also they also briefed me what are their plans for the future of South Africa. And later on, I had the privilege of welcoming him at the Independence Stadium then in Umtata. Yeah, it was a good feeling, and uh, the people of the ANC in that region, and also the public in general, uh, filled the stadium, and uh, he could, you could see that he was happy, although he was not well. What was he like as a man? We know about him as a political leader, as a struggle stalwart, but what was he like with his family? What, did, what were his hobbies? Did you know him personally as, as Oliver Tambo the man? No, not that much. I've, uh, I've never uh, uh, worked with uh, O.R. Tambo. The only time I met him was, as I've said, is when I went to see him in his house in London, late 90s. And uh, by the time he landed here, you remember that uh, he had a stroke already. Mm. But what we have read about him in the history is that uh, he was a reasonable individual, a good listener. And for him to have kept the ANC together for so many years, yeah. you are aware that uh, at that stage, uh, the ANC was being harassed in the neighboring countries. And I'm sure he was always given a, a call to say, man, so-and-so has been arrested or killed. It, uh, and I'm sure also it became worse for him when the MK was ordered out of Angola and then to, to Uganda. So that must have been strenuous for him. Mm. So amidst all of the challenges that the ANC was facing at the time, uh, with members in prison, with members in exile, he, he managed to engineer one of the most sophisticated liberation struggles from underground movements to um, ANC branches overseas, as you were talking about. But was there ever a time, do you think, when he thought he would never come home or they might not ever win when you met him in his London home? What was the feeling you got from him then? No, in late 80s, uh, 90s, uh, I mean, uh, late 80, was it 89? Yeah, yeah. late 80, not late 90s. So O.R. Tambo was already uh, thinking of that the, 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 the success was around the corner. Mm. So at that stage, they were optimistic because there were a lot of uh, interaction between him and uh, the people in prison, as well as some academics from South Africa. So they were already beginning to see the, the, the way ahead. But I think the Clark it took everybody by surprise by unbanning the ANC mm. in 1990, because now ANC had to come back home. Yeah. And they, 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 they were not ready the way I see it, in terms of training people to run some of the institutions. Yeah. He was vociferously against tribalism, is that right? We are told that uh, he was uh, against tribalism. Hence, you'll find that the ANC, which came from exile, was composed of uh, different uh, nationalities. Mm. Uh, he lived to the vision and the values of the ANC, that of promoting non-racialism. An incredible moment happened uh, last Thursday with the unveiling of the statue of Oro Tambo uh, at the International Airport, all to mark the celebration of, of Tambo's life and his legacy. But, but some, some will be asking, how significant is that, given the current political climate we're in? 
Well, it's a recognition to the role played by O.R. Tambo. We cannot associate uh, what is happening uh, on what he has done mm. for, for this country. Uh, the problems we are having currently are going to be sorted out soon, I'm sure. I mean, we're only left with few months before the election. Let the voters uh, take, say, a last word as to what kind of South Africa they need. Mm. Because under, in the last 10 years or so, or eight years, we have been under siege because of uh, lack of uh, maintaining standards by the ANC government. Something I asked my previous guest, but I'd like your, your take on this too. What's, what's your opinion on an event like this um, throughout the year, the series of events that we've been seeing uh, commemorating the life and the legacy of Oro Tambo? Uh, it's supposed to create awareness. It's supposed to create social cohesion. Do you think that's happening? Do you think we need more of these sorts of things, more dialogue, more remembrance? Well, I hope uh, that uh, in future when they commemorate these events, they should involve other people, even opposition parties, mm. so that we show uh, to the outside world and the rest of South Africans that we are united. Yeah. But uh, they tend to use these to build their own party at, this, at, at the same time using the state resources, which is unfortunate. We'll leave it there. Former Transkei leader and current UDM leader, Banto Olimisa, thank you very much for thank your you. time. Thank you.